All right, let's talk about lighting. We recently shot a documentary about a cyclist who got into an accident with a car, and like most documentaries, the main footage was an interview. We shot it on the Sony FX6 in the Chioptic Stream 28 to 85 mm cine zoom. If you want to check it out, it's actually up on our channel right now. It's called It Could Happen to You. For this interview setup, we lit it with only two lights, two Aperture 600Ds, one with a 150 dome, and one with a 36 degree spotlight mount. We had a few reasons why we decided to light it with only two lights, but the main main reason was we only had six hours to shoot the whole thing. All right, so let's talk about the actual lighting here. Um, so in this frame, you can see we ended up doing a few different things to this white wall as well as went for a specific mood and tone. So as you can see, we ended up using a 600D with a 36 degree spotlight mount with a Venetian blind gobo in it. Um, what's awesome about spotlight mounts is that you can create awesome textures like this in any kind of room. Um, so it's kind of like a, like a cheap way to have set design without actually having set design or, or art decorations. Um, you kind of do it through lighting this way. The other thing we did was we unfocused the actual light lens so that the Venetian blinds wouldn't be so prominent in the shot. And then I believe we were at like one or two percent intensity on the 600d which is obviously you can tell that it's a pretty bright image but it's still a lot darker than everything else going on in the foreground as you can see we ended up using um, the actual bike that the talent had to create some interesting image in the background and i feel like if you were to look at this image without knowing anything about this documentary you would probably know that it's about a cyclist so that's everything about the background light, now let's talk about the hair light. So for this shot, we actually didn't end up using a hair light. So there's two reasons why we decided not to use a hair light. I believe there's specific times for when you need to use a hair light, and in my situation, I think a lot of times it has more to do with more of a commercial aesthetic, something more bright and poppy. Well, in this situation, we didn't feel like it was the right move because it was more of a uh, inspirational story, but also sad at the same time, so we felt kind of like just letting the, the, the image be the way it is with like a single source looking situation. The second reason why we didn't use a hair light is because we actually thought that we could create depth by separating the subject and the wall as far as possible. And we ended up filming in a studio that had enough space for us to do that. So as you can see, it still creates a nice line separation between the background and the foreground. All right, let's talk about the main light, the key light. For this interview, we ended up using a 600D with a 150 dome, some magic cloth, and then the grid that comes with the 150 dome, as well as an extra layer of four x four half grid. The reason why we double broke the light like this is because um, it being a point source, even though it is going through some big diffusion, um, it is still gonna be a little bit harder than if we were to use a panel. Uh, but the reason why we used the point source is because we wanted that round shape that came out of the dome. It's more flattering on people's faces. A lot of times our faces are more ovalish shaped rather than rectangular or square. Um, so I think it's more flattering on most faces. On top of that, it creates a pretty nice eye light. So if you look at his eyes, you can see that it's more of a rounded shape rather than a squared off shape. The other nice thing that we did to make this interview look as best as possible and attract our attention to the person's face is that we ended up using a bottom chop on our light. So what a bottom chop usually is, is some sort of flag, whether it's a two by three, a four by four, or a wag flag, something bigger, um, black, that covers the bottom section of the light. And you would raise it as high as it goes up to the person's chest. And you'll, you'll notice the levels when, when you're raising that flag go down on their body. So if you look at this image, you can see that this part of his body is a little bit darker than this part of his face, which is where we want most of the light hitting. What's nice about this is we pay more attention to the face because we have less bright things to look at in the image. I recommend you start putting a bottom chop on all of your interview lights. It's definitely gonna make for a nicer looking image. The other thing that happened on set that wasn't planned but just happened naturally was there was actually a white wall on this side of the world. And so our key was coming from this corner here and what happened is this white wall ended up bouncing back some light. And you can tell it's right there on his cheek which actually gave a little more texture to his face rather than it just being completely just shadow. The other thing we wanted to talk about too was directionality. Like we talked about before having these Venetian blinds in the back here, but then also our key is coming from the same angle, which makes it seem 
Like it's just one source. It could possibly be a window. It could possibly be just one light that's lighting up both things. So it, it feels like a less complicated image, more uh, focusing on the character, on the subject, because that's what's important in this scene. We really had a lot of fun shooting and lighting this um, and it's up on our channel already. So if you have a chance, please check it out.